Hello and welcome to the Cabin Gwinnett's Woolcast, coming to you from our log cabin deep in the Canadian forest. I would like to welcome our new viewers. Yes. And for those of you who don't know who we are, this is Christopher. And this is the other guy, Jane. We've got yarn to talk about. We've got lots of yarn to talk about. And we're going to talk about breed specific sheep associated with those yarns. We're also going to talk about what's happening outside into the wilderness around the cabin. And we're going to talk about what we got in the mail. You got mail. You got mail. And we're also going to talk about some finished objects. So sit back, grab your favorite drinks, and we'll tell you a story. What's been going on at the cabin over the last few weeks? Like what? Well, I think we have a new pet. I think we yes. have a new pet. Um, and it's an owl, it's a Barrett owl, and it's so cute. I think it's, it's I'm pretty sure it's a juvenile owl. Well, what's that? Well, how did it all start? Okay, it, it all started with my nap. I was taking a nap in the afternoon on the porch and in the hammock, and I love sleeping in the hammock. So I'm asleep, and then all I hear is quack, 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 and, <laughs> and the crows were all around, and they were in a tree, and then I saw this huge wing mass uh, come after one of the crows, and it was an owl. Picture it, the birds, yeah. Hitchcock. Yeah, I think Same was, scene, I think, <laughs> is what he's talking about. It was kind of like that. It was kind of like that. Yeah, I could hear all the commotion from the inside. I don't know what was going on out there. And so the, the owl went after one of the crows, and then they flew off, and then the owl came back, and then one of the crows came back, and it was squawking for the rest of the murder to get to come back, and... Murder? That's a gang of... <laughs> it's, a, it's a gang of crows. There is a murder mystery. There's a murder mystery. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, but you were saying that that's what they do. They do... Crows will sort of... Not a, it's because they, they view it as a... Uh, the owl as a predator, and so um, they don't want that um, in their backyard so they're so they're trying to get get rid of it and I felt sorry for the owl because the owl as you said was is a juvenile owl and you can tell that by this the, we heard it at night yeah it does a screeching sound which yeah. is uh, indicative of it being a juvenile yeah and then because the adults are very they've got a very distinct call um, and it's who it goes it's like who 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 cooks for you? That's what it sounds like. Who cooks for you? Yes. Who who cooks for you? Just like that. <laughs> and I got the dog's attention. And so then um, we saw him again. And this time, I went out of the, from the front door, and there it was, less than ten feet up in the tree, just there. The thing was huge. It was right beside the the, log, the woodshed. Yeah, exactly. And I have never seen an owl that close up. We've seen one once, way up high in the tree. I mean, way up high. But to see it just there, and we were able to walk right up to it, yeah. very close up to it. And we got a little, a few photos. Olivia. Olivia, Olivia, Olivia the owl. Yes, she looks like an Olivia. She does. Big black yeah. eyes. Beautiful. We did take some photos. Yeah, a little video. Yeah, and we've got it flying away as well. I'll put that in. Yeah, it's I'll fantastic. That in it's fantastic. And also, we've not mentioned before, but, you know, being in Canada, bears. Now, I think most people, that's right, most people think Canada, they think bears. Now, we've not had any bear sightings, but we were recently um, over at our, 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 our friend and a neighbor who plows our driveway, and he was talking about the black bear coming. Our friend down the way. Down the way. Yeah. And the bear was right in his yard, and he couldn't believe it. This far sort of down. A two-year-old, he said. Yeah, yeah. It was a juvenile as well. Well, juvenile was quite young. He said it was definitely a young bear. Now we have seen um, claw marks down by the stream just out here, and I mean these paws are way bigger than my hand, and the claws are about the length of oh my gosh. Yeah. a finger. Yeah. So definitely, and we've seen you know, it's it's what it's left behind, and definitely bears 
they've been seen up at the little tiny country airport up there. Yes, uh, which is just down the way. Yeah. And we also, you can see, because we've got a stream running through the property, the claw marks are usually on the embankment, or like around yeah. there, so. So they're coming down to, to drink, and they, apparently yeah. they come from up north, they follow the, you know, the uh, wood lots between farmland and down where we are, where there's a real large expanse of acreage, where there's a lot of forested area back there, which um, we haven't, we don't really want to see the bear up, up close in person. <laughs> I mean, you would think it would be kind of neat. Like, oh, there's a bear. But do you really want to see a bear? Yeah, and, and I think because we have the dog, Zan is, is definitely keeping the bears away. And, and other animals, a lot of other animals. So, um, and, and, and people as well. <laughs> the um, hikers who get lost and end up in our backyard. Unwanted visitors. <laughs> so, and flowers. Well... We have a few flowers, as you can see here, but yeah. we haven't had any rain. The thing is, we've gone weeks without rain. The, the grass looks like it's been scorched. Well, everything's been scorched. So, you know, lucky to have a few things coming up in bloom, as much as we were trying to water here and there, but yeah. being very thrifty with the water, um, we did have some plants come up. Yes, do you know what they are? Flowers. Yeah, they're flowers. <laughs> cone flower. Um, you can use cone flower for dyeing. And... Bee balm. Bee balm. I know it because I planted that one. Yep. And phlox. So they're nice. And these. It's, the, it's the same, same. cone flower. You know what? Look no, at this that. one's orange. Yeah. Well, look at that one closely. The orange. It has one petal. It has uh, one petal that is not orange. Uh, so I uh, that's interesting. Maybe it's a hybrid. Maybe it's a hybrid. They're gorgeous. Yeah, they're nice. They're very nice. One of them has a nice scent. So and the, and the bees love the bee balm. Yes. Tracks the bees. Yeah. We like that. That's the name. Yes. <laughs> and speaking of flowers. Yes. That leads into the next thing I want to talk about. Which is? Solar dyeing. Solar dyeing. Oh, yes, because you did use some of the flowers, the delphinium. Uh, what, and what other flowers you used last week? And this is the result. This is the result. I used a lot of different things. Um, I've got more in here, actually, because I, I did a whole tutorial on solar dyeing in the last yes. episode. Oh yeah, and the colors came out amazing, and yeah. just the, the the variation in the colors are incredible. And I made a mistake with one of them, and I want to talk about that as well. Yeah. So we'll talk about which. Yeah. So I'll, when when we get there. But we should start with this one. Why this one? Okay. Because oh, that's a beautiful that's a beautiful lime green. Is it lime green? Well, it's kind of yellowy lime green. Yes. Yeah. What would you say? I would say that that is um, a lime green. Is it green. the lilac? It is. No, it's the black-eyed Susie's. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I remember when you were doing it, you said, wow, look at this shade. That yeah, the color's fantastic. Picked up, picked up on that before. Yep. Going with similar color, but more intense yellow. Oh, that's very deep yellow. That's very intense. You know what that is. I'll give you a hint. When you take the lid off, it smells great. <laughs> Think about onion soup. Oh, it's yeah. Of course, the it's onion, onion skins. skins. Yeah. Yes, because you do get a very vibrant. And sometimes you use um, a combination of red and yellow onions. I do. I do. And I did in this one as well. I used a combination of the onion skins. And what I like to do is, did you watch the last video? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I like to do is I like Twice. to go, I like to go into the supermarkets and there's usually tons of onion skins lying around. So I collect them all up and put them in a plastic bag and then I'll throw in an onion and then go in and yes. they'll look at me and ask questions and I'll just tell them I'm collecting the onion skins. But uh, or what I've done is I've gone in and talked to the manager, the store manager, and they, they scoop them up for me and let me let me take them. That's so because right. they're just gonna get rid of them. Yeah. So it's excellent use of, of that. One of the other things that you can use from your kitchen is avocado. And so I was using avocado, dying avocado, and this is the mistake I want to talk about. Oh, okay. So when I was, so when I had this in the jar and I was dying it, it was, it looked great. It took a while, it took it probably five days to start to take color. I put the pit and the skin in the uh, mason jar. I took it out, I rinsed it off in a bucket, and the bucket had iron in it. 
and it was from right. an another other dye that I picked up the wrong bucket. And so I put it in like this, went in this color, which is very, very peachy. It's very peachy, and it came out this color. Which is like a beautiful... Beautiful lavender. A beautiful lavender. Sort lavender. Of like a, it's beautiful. Well, and also silvery. It's like a sil yeah. silvery... Lavender. Oh, it's, it's really nice. I, I, I like this color. But you could have... I mean, you've, you've done... You've done this before with color. Yeah. But it's just you wanted to show the avocado, but you got two colors. And they still show the avocado, but with Two the, colors with the same avocado. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? And so, um, I mean, I've done, I've done this in the past, but I've, I've, it was the mistake was oh, picking, yeah. up the, yeah. picking up the picking up the bucket. But yeah. I'm very it happy was, with the mistake. It was one of those aftermaths. You had like a, a, you had the iron aftermath, which you weren't planning on using, but you just dipped it in there, and there you have it. Yep. The other one I want to talk about is the cochineal. That is fantastic. Vibrant, vibrant red, and that's very mauvey, purpley. Yes, and so if I were just to simply do nothing, to like, so I, I use the pH balance that we have in our water, and I just add alum to it um, along with the cochineal, that's the color that our water produces. Right. So it's a, it's and a then, mauvey color because it has a high pH balance. Okay. And so I added vinegar to it, and... So what does the vinegar do exactly? It lowers the pH balance. Oh. Okay. And so uh, that's the color that, that came out. Which is fantastic. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's, it's a great color. And you've always had to do that with reds. You're very A little trickier with the reds to get exactly the different shades or the intensity of reds that you want. It's all about the balancing of the pH, isn't it? Yes. Yep. And then this is the delphinium. So the delphinium was in there. Um, that's cool. And, and, and that's, that's the color it turned out. The one that is just a slight hue is the Queen Anne's Lace. And that's and quite nice too. It's kind of like... It's very soft. Um, it's very subtle. It's got a hint of green in there. And it's, yeah, a pale yellow hint of green. Now, I, I could change the color of this. I, if I added more Queen Anne's Lace, I would get a uh, more more of a yellow color to it. But um, I didn't pack pack it tightly. so Or, or I didn't pack it down with... So that's the color that came out, which is still nice. Yeah, it's nice and soft. So that was it. So I would say that it was a success. What is this? Oh, that's matter. <laughs> that's <laughs> this the is different. That is the old matter root that I found in the basement. That I have, I have, I have no idea how old it is. And I know someone gave it to me a while ago, and I thought I would use it. And that's I've, fantastic. I've, yeah, and this is the this is I did it twice. What is this? It's the same thing. That's that's matter as well. Why is it so different? Because this one had um, a little bit of an iron bath in it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, those are incredible too. Yeah. Very good. So thanks. So that was a lot of fun. That was. And I you got a lot of good response with uh, people um, wanting to to do what you were doing. I mean, yeah. following what you were doing with the solar dime because it seems so simple. That's the part I love. I love when people talk about watching this and enjoying it and doing it themselves. Because solar dyeing really is not that difficult to do. And so it's so nice to hear that people are taking on the challenge and, and doing their own yeah, solar dyeing. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Yeah. So speaking of people. People. Male. We have male. Yeah, from a people. Yeah, from a people. person. Yes. A real person. <laughs> Almost a fan. Well, you have. She is a fan. Him. But I, I might need glasses. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, a letter. And it's addressed to, get this, it's just addressed fan mail to the other guy. And um, from Vancouver. Oh, wow. Very excited because who gets mail, like, I mean, real mail? Who gets a letter these days? I know. In the old days, I mean, I wrote, you know, friends. And this is, you know, I'll confess, she, she is a friend, but also a fan. And she does watch our videos intently from the west coast of Canada. So British Columbia is gorgeous. I love oh, British Columbia. Beautiful. I've so been nice. many times. And so yes, yeah, she's from Vancouver. And I have a cousin in Calum in British Columbia as well. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We need to go there sometime yes. real soon. So oh, it would be great. Amanda, if you're watching, hi Amanda. And and Andrea, this is my this is my friend and fan, Andrea. So what she mentioned was that um, she watches our most of the videos, most of a video at a time, because at some point she says, you know, we're looking a lot more relaxed and a lot more natural. And she is not a knitter, is that correct? She what? Is she a knitter? No, she's a non-knitter. 
okay. but she loves just watching. She loves all of the asides in 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 the videos. You know the stories of the cabinet, the dramatic flair that yes. you add. But yes. she says here that um, the history lessons go on a little too long. <laughs> I tend to talk a lot because I know a lot of stuff and I like to share with everybody. But you that's do. a good point. You know, some yes, people love, like to share. love it and she and she's like thinking, but. You know, on the other hand, she was able to go make herself a coffee and come back, but then I was still talking about Louis Boer. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, you know, knitters, perhaps knitters love, like and love the history, which is great. But she loves a lot of the other stuff, like you and your hot apron. She loved, she oh, really liked that. Apron. She said you looked cute and things like that. So um, she is looking forward to the next one. So thank you, Andrea. And she, and thank you, she, Andrea. she used her special print paper that she hadn't used in ages. So very Fantastic. Special. I love it. That's great. Yes. So that was my mail. Thank you. I got a little bit of mail as well. You got mail. Yeah. yeah. You got a lot of mail. You got ongoing packages well, of mail. I could use the royal we. We got lots of mail. And I think that, um, so I can use the royal we. Because really, we're, both, we're all benefactors from this. Are we? Yes. And so the mail that I'm talking about is... The, I guess, the, the yarn that came to us from the great Toronto yarn hop. And I have to say it very slowly because in the last episode, I was all excited and I kept saying the great Canadian yarn hop because I kept Where's thinking about, race? I kept thinking the great Canadian race. Right. So that's what I kept thinking of. But the great Canadian, the great Toronto yarn hop. Yeah, anyway, I was really excited. Oh my gosh. I was it's really, such a great cause too. And you, he, yeah. For, to, it went, the, Proceeds of it went to um, Sistering, uh, which we talked about in the last episode yes. as well. But we're going to talk about the yarn because y you, par you you were partaking in this event and you got yarn. Yes. Lots of it. Yeah. And so it, I don't usually buy yarn online because I like to go into a yarn shop and touch the yarn and um, smell it as well and look at the color and... Uh, feel the texture and all that stuff and so you can't do that online but there's something to be said about online shopping too because it you know so many great uh shops and online stores that have great websites you can actually see and almost feel the crisp and clear yes. photos of a good website could yeah. really sell that yarn as well and that did you read the show notes already your show notes i was going to talk about no, show notes. No, I was talk about what i loved about the great toronto <laughs> yarn house. i did not read your notes so i didn't <laughs> I don't do notes. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a great, I was really looking forward to this. I was looking forward to participating in this. And there are 11 stores participated. I think it was 11. Okay. And so all in the greater Toronto area. And so I thought, okay, how are we going to do this? We're two hours away from Toronto. Uh, we have COVID-19 going on. Um, we're not, I'm not going to the stores. We're going to the stores and I'm probably not going to do um, roadside pickup because it's, because it's two hours away. So everything, so I thought, okay, we're gonna have to order online. And ordering online can get expensive if you have to pay for shipping. So I thought to myself, maybe what I'll do is look and see what the, if you hit a certain dollar threshold, then you get free delivery. Oh. Oh, so that's you can, So you can right. buy more yarn. <laughs> So it's not about saving. It's just about I can get more yarn. So I was thinking, okay, what am I? How am I going to do this? There's 11 stores. My budget's not going to allow me to shop in every store. So how did you decide what what colors, what brand, what? Really? Okay, I'll I'll talk about the methodology that I used to do. There was he had a methodology. Of course, I always do. So for the 11, I wanted to look at all the websites, all 11 websites, and then I thought, okay. you know what? I'm going to take extra time and look at. There were some yarn stores, and you'll find this very hard to believe. There are yarn stores in the Toronto area that I've never been to before. Wow. And so I thought, why don't I were focus? They new? No, it's just th there are a number of them and I just haven't been to all of them. I think there were one or two that were. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are, are, are newer than Relatively. others. Relatively. Yeah. And so that's what I did. I, and then I focused on those stores and then I narrowed my purchases down to three stores. Oh, okay. Oh, because I mean, most stores will carry a lot of everything, a lot yes. of different brands and a lot of different. Um, colors at everything at different shops. So really, yeah, yeah. So that's what I that's what I wanted to do, and because I thought I had to do something, and it was overwhelming. To see, when you've got eleven stores, they offer so much yarn. It's like, only you know, overwhelming because <laughs> your wants are always greater than your needs. You know how it goes, right? So let's talk about <laughs> what I loved about this. Okay, because I loved everything about it. Sure. Sorry. 
But one of the things that I was very surprised with was shopping online. Some of the stores did an excellent job at describing the yarn and then describing the uh, where the yarn came from because that's what I love. Okay. Uh, and if you were to walk into a shop and pick up a skein of yarn, you can read the label, but you're not really going to know um, and it, much about the the mill or where it came from. And I thought that the Shopping on a website and having a store provide this information was fantastic. So that was one big surprise for me. I loved it. And I also, the delivery of the yarn was very quick. It, it was fantastic. And the owners put in a, a, a little note uh, and personalized it. So yeah, that was nice. That, that was fantastic because nice it connects you to, to the yeah. store yeah. as well. So I, I loved it. It was a fantastic experience. It was, it was great. And we got some great yarn. We do. And I went through his stash and um, there are a couple of yarns. What, what do we want to talk about first? Let's okay, I think we should start at the Knit Cafe. That was the, the first purchase that I made. And the Knit Cafe is located in, on, in Roncesvalles. That's a section of Toronto. And they have a great reputation in Toronto. And I don't think I've been to that shop with you. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because I've not been in that area of Toronto for some time. It's a little, it's just, it's just a little bit west of where we are. Yeah, it's not that, not that far at all. Okay. Well, Lycan and Lace. I was going to talk about Lycan and Lace. I did a little research on my own because I was fascinated by this yarn. And this was one that you picked up there, correct? Correct. So Lycan and Lace. We love Lycan and Lace. So here, let me just talk about um, Lycan and Lace's The Backstory because I find that very interesting. So Megan, who's the proprietor behind Lycan and Lace, now she used to own a yarn shop in Toronto. Yes. An LYS. Do you know what that means? I think I do know what it's LYS. explained it to me shortly um, before we started. <laughs> it's your local yarn shop. So this would be our local yarn shop, but there are many shops you go to in Toronto. So There's she used to own this particular yarn shop. And she closed up shop, sold it, sold the name, sold the um, inventory, everything, and she moved on. She moved to the East Coast, to Sackville, New Brunswick. So what she was doing, um, she decided to start dyeing some of her own fibers. So she started selling um, her wares on um, at markets and craft fairs, farmers markets around the area. Then she had the idea of starting up a new company, which she named Lycan and Lace. That's a great name. And so, yeah, and she said just randomly top of her head, and she said, you know, it'll grow on her, and she, she liked it, she loved it, and she, she went with it. And so... To get started, she had quite the um, she was quite a go-getter because she needed a little bit of uh, help. She borrowed an iPhone to take her photos, something that had a really good uh, capacity for photography, um, and a computer. Now it just so happens that um, the children and and hubby were going to be away for a week, off to the parents in Newfoundland, and so she decided she is going to get this up and running. She had one week to do it. Lo and behold, she threw it together, well, worked her butt up, I would say, and voila, she has lichen and lace with these wonderful yarns. She has them um, there in over 50 shops around the globe, including England and Japan, um, and she has a fantastic website that she put an effort to. What I like about it's a really good website. It is a good website. What I like about the website is it's, um, it's very um, classy in its simplicity. It, same with her logo. Um, so if you go to the website, it's very easy, easily navigable, and she's got some great yarns with a whole palette of colors. Um, here we have an evergreen, we have a petal, a rose petal. Rose petal, rose. Looks, yep. and this, which looks just like it looks, birch. Yeah. Some of the um, some of the very creative uh, colors that she has, and I, I took note because I thought they were quite fun. She has things like burnt lobster. Yes. <laughs> I see seashells. Say that three times. And one of my favorites, only because I'm sitting next to one, Silver Fox. I like it. I think I'm going to say Libra. <laughs> <laughs> that's another story altogether. <laughs> so that's like an Lace. Do you like the colors? I love the colors. They, They're great. Nice. They're yeah. really nice. Yeah, this evergreen is a deep, dark forest green. And like yeah. I said, the rose is like, it looks like, it looks like rose petal because there's just this natural sort of rose petal hue to it. And the birch, well, as I mentioned, it looks like a birch bark tree. Yep, it does. And we're surrounded by birch. That's right. 
So I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this yarn yet. I think I know, uh, but I love the colors and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to choose them. Okay, and I'm going to ask you what the reason was for choosing these two colors. But before, well, you tell me why you chose these two colors and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I, I, I thought the gold was, was gorgeous and um, I liked the, the fact that, I, I liked the way it was spun um, and, and the photos were fantastic on, on, on Julie's, or, or on the website, on the Knit Cafe's website, so I could really see the yarn. And I was, I'm familiar with um, Julie's yarn as well. Um, but it was, it's also Rambouillet and... Um, I'll tell you. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little bit about these because you know what? I thought you were asking me. No, I was just asking you about the color because <laughs> my thought is why you chose the color. I thought it's because Davis would be mindful or, or would of myself because of, you know, my in my younger days, I had golden locks of blonde oh. <laughs> hair, flowing hair and, uh, you know, the blue eyes. But this is Athens blue and this is called Cite d'Or, which is Golden City. Now, these are Julie... Ashley. Okay, we'll go with that story, Yarns. by the way. That was the reason I got the, the That's what I thought. Yeah. So, Julie Ashley, and she's from Sherbrooke, Quebec. Sherbrooke, Quebec. And so, the thing behind Julie is Julie and Jean-Francois are the two behind Julie Ashley Yarns. Now, she has, um, she has a, a, a commitment to bringing together art enthusiasts, art enthusiasts, in creativity, in openness and freedom. And she's all about, they are all about um, following your own path and stepping out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And yes, they do have wonderful, wonderful yarns. Um, their website is very user-friendly. What you mentioned, I like about it as well, is they have the color palettes yes. beside every one of their colors. And they have some fantastic, um, uh, fun, incredible names as well. I mentioned... Golden City, Cité d'Art, and Athens, which is Athens, which you think the blue colors of Yep, in I can see that. Um, a few that were a little fun to me were Après la pluie, Tea de l'après-midi, and Petit Fleur, which pretty much translates to small flower. After the rain, small fruit, after oh. the rain, afternoon tea with little fruit. Those were kind of oh. fun and Humorous. So some of her wool, as you mentioned, they, they do have a combination. They have these combinations. This one in particular is called Duya. Now it's the Rambouillet Columbia yeah. blend. Now, other than that, they also have um, they also have kid mohair and they have, you know, uh, merino with merino cashmere. Uh, they also have um, Rambouillet Columbia, I mentioned. And pretty much every kind of wool for any knitting project you could possibly imagine, with beautiful color palettes and a whole variation of uh, of weights and different yarns. Yeah, Julie Aslan's colors are, are so beautiful. Well, so. she's she is one of, if not top, Canadian. Oh, for sure. As far as uh, she's yarn extremely yarn. talented. Absolutely. Yeah. There was one other yarn I wanted to talk about. Now it's this yarn here which is from Brooklyn Tweed. Now, what was the reason for this purchase in particular? I like the color of it, and I also like the fact that Brooklyn Tweed focuses on breed-specific sheep. Oh, yeah, because that is something that we're big on, because we've talked about sheep, Rambouillet history. A little bit, history, yeah. A little bit about some of the sheep, and, and, and yeah, that's something that's um, to look up to, because that's something you are doing and like to do. Yeah, exactly. And this one here in particular is their shelter line. Now, they have um, a mission, and their mission is to bring hand knitters together with timeless yarns and timeless patterns. Okay. And as you mentioned, breed specific sheep. Now, they have, um, so, and oh, and the other thing that they're big about is it's all very much um, within the United States. So they, they, they source from farms, sheep from the United States, it's spun in the U.S., and it's also uh, dyed within the yeah. United States. So very big on that. So their sheep, uh, their breed-specific sheep, they have, for example, a purebred Targhee. Yep. 
And it is from, oh, they have farms out of South Dakota and Montana. Mm -hmm. And now that breed specifically is a very, very soft and very fine wool. And it's um, down the line, it's of Merino ancestry. They also have Atargi Columbia. Now what they do is, you know, breed specific is in a very simple way is where, you know, you take the best qualities or the aspects of certain wools and if you breed those two sheep together, you get the best of the best. Right. So the Targhee Columbia is because they took the soft fineness of uh, the Targhee and then the medium wool, which is a little more robust and warm and the warmth of the Columbia and combined it. And that's one of their top sellers as well, which this is a Targhee Columbia. And also we mentioned Rambouillet, which they have the Rambouillet as well. And well, well, let me mention that this they have out of Wyoming and the Rambouillet on the West Coast, because I mentioned Rambouillet West Coast of, of the U.S. And that's where the Rambouillet in California. So one of the farms they source from there, one of the sheep farms. And of course, we know the Rambouillet. It's the first cousin of the Merino. It's a beautiful, fantastic wool. They also have a very... Um, a very good website. They have just about everything. Not only do they have a very palette and a plethora of patterns as well. So you can go there to find patterns and they have a very good um, resources page on their website. Yes, they do. Absolutely. And their yarn specifically, um, I would have to say, is quite nice and quite a wonderful company to be um, shopping. Okay, so I have a question for you. So you said the yarn is nice. What makes the yarn nice for nice. you? Nice. It's nice. Well, like you, well, what do people look for in, in Well, yarn? what do you, like, you said this like, yarn's nice. So, well, what is it about the I yarn would say that makes it nice? They have incredible, they have just about everything under the rainbow in, in terms of colors. So any, any, anything you're looking for is in terms of color. And then for, you know, yarn-specific, sheep-specific breeds, you're, you're going to be guaranteed. I mean, everybody um, wants quality yarn. Yeah. And every shop, I think, would carry you know, different levels of, of, of variations of yarn. Um, so that's what I think people are looking for. And then specific projects. I mean, if, if you have all the varying weights, like from, from lace to worsted to DK, sport, um, bulky, um, most shops, I think, carry just about a bit of everything. Yeah. So going in, some people might just go, oh, I love that pretty color, and that's great, because all of these shops have amazing... Yeah. But not all the shops have Brooklyn Tweed, and it's because Brooklyn Tweed has oh um, basically you can they they don't want to oversaturate the market, so they've got um, they designate certain stores that are allowed to sell Brooklyn Tweed. Oh, that I didn't know, and I also yeah. know them as well. Uh, you know, interesting that they'd be called Brooklyn Tweed because if you think in in um, terms of historical um, historical uh, knitwear, you think of tweed in itself as tweed like Scottish tweeds. So Brooklyn Tweed, I know that they have a, a whole section on the website about they're very proud of how and where it all comes from. Yep. And so they do have a, a bit of a history of exactly how this skein of yarn goes from this particular sheep, how they do the carding, the washing, the carding, the spinning techniques, that I found interesting. Yep. And so then it ends up how it goes from a sheep to this wonderful skein right within your hands. And it's fantastic because not every, it's not obvious when you pick up a skein of yarn, you, know, you can't see the life story of it, where it came from and no. how it was processed and all that other stuff. So it's it's fantastic that they're able to draw that link. Yes. But what I did want to say about this uh, Brooklyn Tweed is also we have a connection. We have we have a co person in common with Brooklyn Tweed. Yes. An event. You're going to have to remind me because I, I've, <laughs> As you know, when we, you know, my first time at Vogue Knitting, Rhinebeck <laughs> last year, Vogue this year, I have met a gazillion yes, people. Yes, at least. Knitters. Yeah. Lovely, a lot of lovely ladies of all ages, uh, a, a lot of, uh, you know, lovely gentlemen from all over the place. But I'm even a lot of people and I can't keep track of. Everybody. Well, this one, I can guarantee that you you know How this person. This person? Yes, because we okay. had a huge Don't event. Don't embarrass here. me. We had an event two years ago. Okay. And or maybe it was three years ago now, and John Crane yes. came up to our cabin with his project, and uh, and there's a I have yes. a whole video on this. Um, I think it's probably episode two. Oh, it's an early. And it's, it's a it's a very early one. So John Crane brought more than seventy 
breeds of sheep, samples of their wool. Samples. And so the wool, yeah, not the sheep itself, but just the samples. So we had this huge tent and we set up an exhibit underneath the tent and we asked people from all over to come to, to the event. Okay. And, and so it was fantastic because he had a card, he had a picture of this sheep, and then he had a card explaining what the sheep was. And then he had um, the, the wool from the sheep, the fiber, and it was um, spun into yarn. And there was a swatch for each of them as well. That was, yeah. It was fantastic. You could, you, could, you could see it, the backstory. You could feel it, feel the yarn. Then you could actually see how it knitted up. It was yeah. a fantastic exhibition. We did get a ton of people who came from Brooklyn Tweed. So after that show, John okay. showed it to other other um, areas. I think one of them was the American Sheep Association, okay. if, I, I think. Um, and then after that, um, he went and showed his stuff to or his exhibit to Brooklyn Tweed. Oh, so they so, sort of hosted a similar and I, I think, thing with his yes. This made it into an event. And I think it's well. there now. I think it lives there right now. Oh really? Yes. So it was in our backyard and it made its way around through the United wow. States and I think it's that's ended up great. in Brooklyn Tweed. So so that's the connection. Okay, now we know. Now we know. The next store I want to talk about is Spin Me a Yarn. Where is that? Um that is in that is <laughs> On the west side of Toronto. How come I don't know this one? Because uh, we've never been there. He doesn't take me anywhere, that's why. I, well, I've never been there. No, you've been, you do your secret shopping, and off he goes, I'm just going to be gone for an hour or so, and then... And Trina also wrote me, uh, us, uh, a nice card. <laughs> she doesn't even know it. Was, it was the royal, know me. the royal me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was to us. Uh, so, the yarn that I selected. Okay. Let's go with the... Um, Hemp yarn. Hemp. Oh, so how about the yarn of that? Well, that's quite soft, but it kind of feels a lot like cotton. It, and that's because it is partly cotton. So that's this is um, Elsbeth um, Lavol, and it's hempathy. It's called right. hempathy. And it's it like, feels like cotton because it's part cotton, part hemp, and part modal. Modal? What is modal? It's like the beech, um, the beech tree. They grind the, the wood into a pulp okay. and they make that um, and they, they, they're able to make a yarn out of it. So it's a derivative of that. I like it because it looks like a raspberry donut. <laughs> or Queen, you know, Princess Leia. Yes, that too. That was my second thought. Yeah. So anyway, I, I have no idea what I'm doing with these, but I do like the texture. I, I really because like Because you always purchase things that you have no idea what you're going to do with it. You're just because. No, it, it, I'll, be, it. I'll be inspired to yep. do something with these. That's what I hear all the time. That That's is true. what I hear from it's people. True. You buy it because you're inspired by it, just by seeing it, and you know you're going to do something with it. That's going to be fantastic. Absolutely. Yep. So, very happy with these. And then the next thing is, this is Suffolk uh, sheep, uh, from a oh, Suffolk yes. sheep. And it's also, now Suffolk sheep is, they're meat, primarily meat sheep. Oh, so okay. they're not, you know, they're not known for their wool as much as they are for their meat, uh, but this is mixed with it's a blend of alpaca as well. So know. it's very nice. Oh, that's well, that is quite soft. Now I know alpaca will give it that that softness, but it's still a lot softer than you would imagine because I'm sure the percentage is, you know, there's probably a small percentage of alpaca, but the Suffolk itself is probably still pretty nice. Yes. Yeah, and it's from England. So this is this is from England. I did actually. You'll notice there's a theme. I bought a lot from the UK here, okay. and this is little um, Houndale's yarns, and it's Suffolk sheep. Okay. And the color is. I love the color. Now is that? It looks like. I thought I could see a hint of yellow in there, but it's mostly no. Pink, it's mostly it? pink. It's almost like yeah. a, bubble, a bubble gum pink. It's yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Now what do you have in mind for that? Uh, I don't know. It'll come to me at some point. And then, so the last one is with um, the Knitting Loft. And we've oh, talked okay. about the Knitting Loft in the past. Yes. I know the Knitting Loft. Yeah. And so I wanted to talk about two of them in particular. Um, one of them, well, I know you like these. So let's talk about these because these, these are really interesting. I've never seen these before. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you looking at them. Yeah, these are great. I, 
for some reason these days I love yellows. I, I just think they're amazing. Like this is like a beautiful like a mustard mustard yellow. Yeah. I, I love that deep dark mustardy yellow. I think we go amazing with gray. But these two combinations, this is a, again like a, a, a teal blue or a little darker than that. It's gorgeous. So you're going to be participating in this now. So. I am. Yeah. So this is the Exmoor Sock yarn, and it's from John Arbor Mills, and he is in Devon, Devon, D-E-V-O-N, uh, in the UK, in, in that area. And so this sock is really interesting because it's um, Exmoor. Exmoor is a breed of sheep that came from the UK. I don't know that one. Yes. And so an Exmoor is, this is... Um, Exmoor Blueface. Oh, so what do you think? So a combination of Blueface, but it's Exmoor Blueface. Yeah. What? 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 Blueface what? Blueface Lester. Yeah. So it's it's partly he's basically put together um, Exmoor Ram or an Exmoor an Exmoor Horn. Um, that's what the sheep are called, Exmoor Horns. Okay. With a Blueface Lester and cross them, and so that's that's what he has here, and then he's also got Cordell. Oh, so it's sixty uh, percent Exmoor Blueface, and the blue the Blueface adds a nice um, sheen to the color. That's what that's what that brings to this wool. Oh yes. Um, and then you've got Cordale, and then you've got um, Zwerpleys, and so and Zwerpleys are it's from the Netherlands, and. Okay. Um, there are, I, I try to see if there's any farms here in Canada that have these sheep, and, and we don't. I, I, or I was unable to find them, so right. I have anyone knows of any. I've across that. I mean, I, I've been, you know, browsing and reading all about sheep breeds in that uh, one book I mentioned when we were talking about books, and that's one uh, name or breed I've, I've not come across. Yeah, and, and one of the things I highly recommend checking out his, the website for, for this yarn because there's a, you can do a tour of the mill. It's really interesting. Oh, it's about forty-five minutes long too, so it's it's really detailed and it's it's great. Okay. So they've they've done a fantastic job on their website, and so I love this yarn. It's great. It's going to be. I'm, I'm making socks out of these. So you know. So I do things. know. Okay. Yeah, and I love the color. I think yeah, the color is great. great. Can you just imagine a sock with um, the toe bush? It would be interesting. Now they're having the foot of the sock this color, and then the toe and the heel this color, or vice versa, or yeah. one of each. Yeah. So it'll look right. What else you got in there? The other one I got was Gotland. Oh, Gotland. Well, Gotland, I know. Yeah. A little bit about Gotland. Yeah. And Gotland is from, the Gotland sheep are from Sweden, um, originally uh, from an island called Gotland. Yes. Yeah. And so there's a, a definitely a theme, I think, in some of the colors that I got. There's a heathery color to them, mm. or a heathery um, quality to it. And so this is from Blacker, and Blacker is from uh, the UK as well, at Devon and Cornwall, just around the border. Okay. And so I don't know what it was, but I was gravitating towards the UK in, in this. I can see that. Yes. And the funny thing is, you know, when you're thinking about this Toronto yarn hop, and you think of, of shops, local shops, but again, you you got to be reminded that they do carry a bit of everything. So yes, not expecting to. You're thinking Canadian shops, or they weren't all Canadian shops, but online, I guess. Yeah, their, their yarns are coming from far and wide. Yeah. So you get a little bit of everything, which is not what I expected because I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking Toronto, but then I'm not expecting that we're talking about all of these yarns from the UK. Yep. The other thing that I loved about this yarn hop was the just the when you go into the websites. You can feel the character of the store, the, the characteristics oh, of the store, and so that was really right. interesting. They, they didn't all seem the same; it wasn't the same experience, and I love that about it. And and part of what gives a care, um, what demonstrates character in a yarn shop, is the type of yarn that they're carrying. That's interesting because see, um, opposite, or like total opposite experience from myself because I'm talking about these yarns, but I've not been to those yarn shops. And funny you should mention that because yeah, I've saw you know seen photos and knowing their backstory, you do get a feel for. What she's about, Megan, let's say for like an Enlace as an example, and you could imagine what her shop would feel like or look yes. like based yeah. on what I've seen here yeah. and on the website. Yeah. But I've not physically been to this shop well, because it's on the East Coast where I haven't been.
overall, the great Toronto yarn hop was fantastic. A great experience and highly recommend um, those who can to participate in it and or participate in your own yarn hops as well. So, so, so let's put all this away. Now what are we talking about? We're going to talk about finished objects. I have fobs. No. I have no finished objects. i got to get me some finished objects. Yeah, you definitely do. Well, I know that you started a sweater. And I want to start a sweater based on... That's a whip. I'm not going to talk about my whip. Oh, we're not talking about whips. We're talking about <laughs> finished objects, which are fobs. I learn every day something. Okay, so we're going to talk about vamps. What's a vamp? This That's is, what I know. I already know what a vamp is because it was explained to me. But for some of us, what is a vamp? This is a vamp, and this is a vamp. They look like sockets. They look like sockets. Um, but they're thick. They're thick. They're woolly. Yes, they're thick and woolly. So, is it a slipper or is it a sock? So, is it like for innerwear or outerwear? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. What's the answer? Is it a sock or a Well, slipper? I think it could be both. I mean, it's definitely a sock. You read the book. <laughs> I did not read that book. It's, it's the called answer, intuitive. The um, answer, I, was, I think you could wear... I, I would probably kick around the house in these because they look so cozy and warm. I would probably... I could see these as slippers. But I've seen them on your feet in Birkenstocks. Yes, they're my Birkenstocks. Birkin socks. There you have it, folks. They're not even bad. They're Birkin socks, and and they're great. So this is from the Saltwater Classics book. Oh yes, and because I've been working my way through the book, we talked about that book on uh, the last time when we were talking about books and the Saltwater Ladies. Yes. Yep. And so this one I wanted to uh, read about vamps and knit vamps. And so vamps are really they're in between they're, they're knit in Newfoundland, okay. and they're really um, cross between a sock and a slipper, and you can wear them in your boots, um, and they're made thick um, so that you can keep your feet warm, and they've been wearing them for years. So this is, I was really happy to knit these up because they knit up so quickly, and yeah, they're, they're really, they're really comfortable. These are fantastic. It's a really good pattern. I mean, I love the way these, the heel looks very stiff. Very stable, firm, and thick. Yes. And well done. Yeah. And this bit of, um, what do you call this here? Top part of the sock? The top part of the <laughs> sock is wonderful. <laughs> well, you can make them. I thought there was a technical name for it. The other thing that it's I like ribbing or something. But it's nice. And it is ribbing. It looks like tight and snug. And um, that's Knit One Pro One. That's and then the wool is. that you use is absolutely. Fantastic. Cut. I found this. Yeah, I found, found it. He found wool. I found it in my yarn stash. Oh, so you didn't find it. Find with it. no label on it. But it's definitely, it's obviously hand-painted yarn. Oh, yeah. It looks like that. Yeah. And so, it's, and it's comfortable. So I don't know the breed of sheep or if it's a mixture or, or what it is. Um, but it, it is quite nice. And, it, and they knit up so quickly. And so I would... I think a bunch of people are going to be getting these for Christmas too. I keep saying that too on projects. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of knitting to do. Yeah, you do. So then the next one. I'd like to attempt a pair as well. And you mentioned. Oh yeah, you, you should. You should definitely do that. You can handle that no problem. So, this is. I would say if we were to read the fine print, this mm -hmm. technically is not a finished object, even though I'm calling it a finished object because I have a couple ends that I have to to sew in. But other than that, they're pretty much done. The knitting's done in it. Right. And so this is from the same book. And see. Yeah, those, those are fantastic. Are. You'll probably have to. And they're really so good. cushy. They're really, yeah, really. These are absolutely beautiful. Thank they're you. They're stunning. That's the, the foot part of it. Um, and, and what I like about the pattern is that you can make these as long as you want to. They're not yeah. overly fussy about it. I was going to say, this one is definitely. this. Upper part of the sock <laughs> is somewhat longer than the this, cuff. this one. This one's more of an ankle, and this would go just slightly above your ankle. Yeah, I like and them both. They I love are, them both. And talk about cushy. These are really cushy. cushy. Now these take a little bit longer than these uh, because you are doing some. And what do you, you, what you use on this? Is this a gauntlet? I used. Thanks for asking. I used 
So the, the color part of it is from, it's Blue Face Lester. Okay. Um, and the gray. The, the gray is a Gotland wool. Oh, it is Gotland. Yeah. Well, I could, you could tell that it's, it's got a very good, um, like it's, it's a robust yarn and it's very thick and sturdy and tough for footwear. Yes. Uh, I have, yeah, so I have to finish mending it and then I'll wash them and they'll be all set. But that was, they were really fun projects to do. And so I'll be knitting more of those and using up some of the yarn that's in my... I might get a pair of pants one day. Oh, you might, or you might knit your own. I will knit my own. I'm, yeah. I'm, you had mentioned, so you had mentioned one was a little, sim this one is a little simpler. Than yes. This. this one, yeah. I mean, this one looks complicated. Yeah. So it is a little bit, but you're saying they're fairly easy in they general. Are. But this one would be a little bit easier for, for someone like myself to start with. This yes. One. Yep. And I will say also, I um, tweaked the, the pattern. So yeah. I decided to do, like for the decrease here, I wanted a little bit of a more round, rounded toe. So I decided to decrease every row rather than similar decreasing to, every other row. this one here. Yes, yes, very similar. And actually I used some of the um, pieces of the pattern in this pattern. Yeah, that's, to, what, to was, that's what it looks like. So yeah. you compensated yeah. one for the other, which is what you do when you're creative. You could just take a pattern and make it your own, really. Yeah. So with something to suit your taste or your likes, you could just s s simply change, make a, a slight change to yeah. the pattern, and it's still amazing. And then the, and the pattern also stopped about here with this pattern and just went into salt and pepper, which is that. But I decided I wanted to see this go all the way up to the top and then just do the shorter row. So I'm happy with it. Yeah. And it, I said, there's, there's all kinds of great color combinations as well. Uh, so this is... I, I'm, I'm looking forward to knitting another pair. So that was a lot yeah. of fun. So I, I talked about this in the last episode. Just want to show, do another shout out. Love this book. And there's a new one coming. There's a new one a coming. One? Yes. Wow. Yep, that's coming that's out exciting. shortly. And Trina Barrett, thank you for telling me about that. And what is that one going to have that's different than these? you got classics. You've got the original saltwater mittens. Now, what, what do you think is coming up in the Kiffs, I think it's... What are those sweaters? I think it's called Gifts. Gifts. I think so. I like that. Yeah. I yeah. like the sound of that. <laughs> Gifts. <laughs> I'm sure it'll sell out. It's a, a lot of the yarn shops will carry it, and you'll be able to buy it online as well. Well, I was just still thinking, you know, something knitted as a gift. Yeah, maybe. Or you can knit it yourself. As a gift. I just think about uh, how, the pride that you have on walking around with your sweater. Or something. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> or your vamp. As well. Yes. So these are vamps. So now, what else do we have on the go? What, what do we have coming up? What's next? We've got something really exciting coming up. We, we do? Yeah, we, were, we did some dyeing for Tabitha. We did? We did. Do you remember Tabitha? Yes, yes I do. You, you've, you've partnered with her. Yes. Uh, we met Tabitha at Rhinebeck and at Vogue. Yes. And then we chatted with her this most recent Vogue. Yep. And so we're dyeing yarn for her. And so we finished dyeing the yarn. I'm going to have some pictures. Hopefully you're seeing them up here. I loved it. I love this exercise of, of dyeing. Her yarn is absolutely fantastic. And this yarn is going to be available at okay. uh, Virtual Vogue. Oh, that's very exciting. I know the colors were amazing. I mean, they, they, her, her yarn, which was what, a combination of... Is that uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I, I picked up the colors so well. Yes. And it's it's interesting how different different uh, breeds of sheep, different yarns, will pick up the color. Yeah. And this worked beautifully with the multicolored colors that you chose to work with. Yeah. So it's been shipped down to Long Island. Yes. Long Island Yarn Farm. Okay. Uh, so it's it's on its way there, and it will be available. She'll be selling that um, through her. She's a she's a vendor at Virtual Vogue this month, and she will be selling selling the yarn. So that's coming up soon. Yeah, that's coming up soon. That's so, very exciting. And there was another Vogue event. Did you go on and buy some? <laughs> <laughs> you might. You might have to have some of that yarn. It was in the palm of his hand. I know. But sometimes you just got to let it go. So you just have to let it go. put it out there. Yeah. And we did two very distinct colors. So there's multi both are multicolored. Yes. And, and very distinct. Yeah, 
Speaking of Vogue, the other thing I wanted to mention, oh. uh, which I didn't talk about, was What's I just that? wanted to share the interview. Oh, right, because you did do your interview, yes. finally. Yeah, and it was with um, John Giswold, and he basically was facilitating um, a Q&A with, with uh, four people, and he does that, it was for the last virtual Vogue that happened in July. I don't know if they're doing that okay. every month, right? but uh, anyways, it was great. John is a fantastic interviewer, and he asked great questions. Um, and it's funny because the other people that were there, Kat Howard is one, she's an artist, and she is in the Rhinebeck area, Kingston area of, of upper, upstate New York, okay. not Kingston, Ontario. Um, okay. And she's an amazing artist. She was there. And I thought that we lived in old, an old house. Like right. ours, our oh, cabin yes. goes back to 18, 1850. And she said hers went back to 1600s. It's like, oh my, like that's, that's, well, that's, that's really the cool. thing. When people talk about history and you could, you could go on and on about history. Yeah. But, but there are still places in the States. You, you think, you know, North America is still relatively a, a new populated country as far as going back to the history of Europe, but to have a house in the, from the 1600s is very oh, unusual you know, in, in, that would in, be? in North America. That's, yeah. that's old. That's very old for North America. So the next time that we go down to Rhinebeck, I'll have to send a note to Kat and say we're on our way. We just want to pop into your <laughs> just historical your old home. And at sure, this, it's incredible. The other thing I wanted to say about the, the interview was actually, I was, I was just, I loved um, hearing the stories of the others. And uh, Legend was uh, was one of the guests, and I had no idea he was there. He's from Toronto. Okay. And he's phenomenal. He's a phenomenal uh, crochet. He was also teaching at, at Vogue. And I went into a store in Kensington Market two years ago in Toronto. Yes. And picked up this um, shoe, and it had crochet on it. And I thought, where did this come That's from? So I was talking to the owner, and he said, oh, it came from Legend. And I said, oh, my gosh, I had to find legend and he's uh, designed all kinds of amazing things so i'll put a link to all of their um web pages so, so this was live out. so you can't really was it videotaped though or? no no it was on zoom it was like a big zoom oh okay. um, session and so and then yeah. they would talk to each of us for so about 10 minutes I didn't, I didn't see it no you were off somewhere i don't even know where you were i think you i don't know you i was probably the packing wool and <laughs> washing or rinsing or something like that yeah Present. Um, uh, where were you? Walking the dog, maybe. I oh. don't know. I didn't want to be. I didn't want to interrupt the interview. Um, and then the last one was Robin from the Knitting Coop, and oh. she's super, super sweet. And yes. she opened her shop six months before COVID hit. Oh boy! And can you imagine how hard that would be? Um, that would be a challenge. So I definitely want to check her store out when she's. I think she's in Virginia. Okay. So when we do an Eastern Seaboard tour. Um, we'll definitely stop there as well. So that was a lot of fun. And we've got lots of dying going, going on. And we're getting inching closer to getting our website finished. And when you were talking about Megan, and she sat down and cranked it out. <laughs> in a weekend. I don't know how And we're still pulled that off. going through. Um, it, it's close. We're, we're, we're getting close. Well, I'm not, I'm not computer whiz. <laughs> Nowhere near. <laughs> I can do a lot of I I I you know I do have some tr background training in writing so you know I I have been helping out that way but I mean it's just we want to just get it right and open yes. and yep. and and we have help we have someone helping yes, us as that's well. just a help help for the actual website yeah and then we've just got to get the content together which we've been slowly putting the content together in photos and all of that so yes. it's it's getting it's almost did you say almost there. It's almost there. Yeah, the photos are done um, pretty much, and the content is is there. It's just a matter of sliding it in the right spot, and yeah. then figuring out when we're going to pull the trigger, and we'll announce the date to everyone. Yeah. So well. it's after this next step, I think, would be the the fine tuning of it all, so that it's all in working order, and you've got everything linked and where it should be, and what you exactly how you want it to look. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Because once it's out there, once it's out there, it's out there. But it's exciting. It is exciting. And I'm hoping people are anticipating and as much as I am. <laughs> Get this thing off the ground. It would be great. 
The last thing I just wanted to mention was thanking all of you for submitting, for those who submitted their the books that they're reading this summer. That was really interesting. It was yes. nice to see some of the books, and it brought back a lot of memories. Some of them when I when I read yeah. them, and a lot of people just a lot of people just commented as they commented on 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 the um, on the podcast. Is yeah. that what you call it a podcast? Not a podcast. Yeah, a vlog. Vlog. A Woolcast. That's why I use Woolcast because I like this. It's a Woolcast. Woolcast. So yeah, so, so people, better. so people are commenting, and as they're making a comment about, oh, that was so interesting, they're just thrown out there, and oh, I've been reading this, and oh, I've been reading this book. I've yeah. Been, so they throw out, and they mention stuff like we've been, you know, we're talking about, you know, jams in the past. So as they comment at what they're watching, they'll say, oh, and by the way, I made strawberry jam, or by the way, that recipe. Like, so people do comment, so you hear a lot of feedback yeah. that way, just in the commentary. Yeah. And you you asked me you know what what's on the agenda for the next couple of weeks you're going to be doing a lot of pickling. Oh yes, pickling. I did start doing a little bit of pickling. Yeah. Um, I've never pickled before. I've been in the pickle once or twice. But yeah. I'm not. Well, I, I think more than once or twice. And uh, but you're also you're pickling not just pickles but. Um, yeah, I did yellow beans. Beans. Yes. And you picked up some amazing beans I'd never seen before. Black beans, but off the vine, locally yes, on one of the markets. beautiful, deep purple, eggplant color almost. Oh, Dark aubergine. Aubergine sounds like Aubergine. Aubergine. I think it might have been aubergine too. <laughs> aubergine. Yeah, but they were so black. They looked black, and when you snapped them, they were red inside. I think they were green inside. <laughs> <laughs> they were green. They were black and they were green inside. That's what made this look uh, so cool. Anyway, anyway <laughs> I'm thinking that those black beans will look fantastic pickled because I've, who would ever seen pickled black beans? Yeah. Green inside. Well, mm -hmm. we will soon. Crunchy, you crunchy. Get your hands on So, yes, I will be doing some of that. Yeah. And the peaches, we got peaches growing and yes, the, I'm just, I keep looking at them every day trying to see if they're going to start turning a nice shade of orangey red so that um, maybe peach... Peach, some sort of peach jam in the future. Yes, yeah, and the peaches are on the top of it. Like, there's a lot of them. Uh, usually, I didn't think there was a lot. But there are a lot if you, mm. higher up. Okay. Um, because I think the dogs and the, the dog, the dog and the deer have been eating the ones lower to the ground. Don't even tell me that. Oh my gosh! And the dog has been eating the rabbit, uh, freaking rabbit, eating the apples as well. The, the dog's been eating the apples. He's been eating the apples, and also. Um, we need to get what we can hear in yonder back there in the fields because beyond the woodlot and the wood forest um, There are cornfields back there. So you've been thinking what I thought when we first came to this <laughs> area It's yes. like I hear gunshots and it's like those are not You called gunshots. the police didn't you? I didn't call the police. One of my good friends. She is uh, a morning radio host And so she's on the oh, you're on the radio talking about it early in the morning <laughs> and this is when remember I didn't have uh, phone service in the beginning. We had yes. terrible phone service awful. because we had to switch from one county to another. So and you basically had to stand on one leg and have one. I leg. had to go up the hill. I had to drive and go up the hill, sit in my car at the top of the hill to be able to make a phone call. It seemed like, yeah, green acres to me. But anyway, um, yeah, I happened to be sitting um, and heard these gunshots. And I'm talking to my friend early in the morning, the radio station, and we're communicating um, via internet because I wasn't able to talk on the phone and I said I hear gunshots that's very unusual it's like is it hunting season because I don't think so um, so she did call the police for me and said well this is the situation so sure enough an OPP cruiser <laughs> pulls into the driveway now this is called Ontario Provincial Police so they asked me they said so um, I've done a little um, you know a tour around the neighborhood and I've gone down the back road um, so, let me tell you, um, you're not from the con country, are you? You must be from the city. And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm from the city, yes. And he said, okay, well, what it is, what you're hearing are these uh, bullhorns or these big sounds that sound like gunshots. And because it's corn season right now and all of the deer are in the field are eating the corn, so they have these corn blowers that sound like Gunshots. Gunshots. Yeah. So I turned on and said to the officer, I said, well, actually, officer, I said, I lived in Toronto for 20 years, and I was <laughs> far from one one other city area of town, and I have heard gunshots outside my window where I dove off my bed. The police scrambled through my yard, <laughs> over the barbed wire fence at the daycare center, 
And they caught the guy on the barbed wire, and then they were searching for the gun in the backyard. True story. So it's like, I do know what gunshots sound like. <laughs> um, and I could tell you that much because, yes, I am from the city. Yeah. So, funny story. It was all good. So this morning you were saying, I hear gunshots. It was too frequent, though. It was too, it, it, it was yes. too frequent. So it was, it was definitely the cornfields. But when I heard it the first time, it was just like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and I thought I just heard three shots. Yeah, but it was continuous because the deer are out there eating the corn, and farmers don't like that. No, and I don't like them eating my fruit off my trees. <laughs> so maybe you might have to get one of those corn blowers. Yeah, yeah we'll see how that goes. <laughs> anyway, was there anything else you wanted to share? Any other stories? No. no. Well, I think <laughs> I think that's it. So uh, thanks for watching, everyone. And we want to wish you a fantastic week. And I'm going to say à la prochaine, mes amis du Québec. Until next time, we'll see you again. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.